Rose Finn Kelsey's Divided Self is a self-portrait that depicts a dialogue between two versions of the artist. One version represents her false self, and the other represents her true self. The photograph explores a concept developed by Scottish psychiatrist R.D. Lang in his seminal work, The Divided Self. In it, Lang posits that within most individuals lie two distinct personas. One is the false self, the socially appropriate and conformist identity that we present to the world, and the other is the true self, our authentic identity, which we keep private. I begin this video essay with this photograph and the theory because of the parallels I see between it and the relationships footballers have with PR. When Kylian Mbappe was interviewed by the New York Times at their Manhattan headquarters in 2022, the footballer was accompanied by a sizable entourage. Among them was his mother, two lawyers, a small documentary crew, a stylist, and two PR representatives. At one point during the interview whilst discussing racism in sports, it suggested that one of the PR representatives, referred to as a handler by the journalist, intervened to prevent Mbappe from addressing the subject. Nevertheless, Mbappe's true self came out as he brushed off the handler and continued to speak on the matter. This moment underscores the pervasiveness of public relations in modern football. Because although Mbappe spoke frankly on this occasion, such authenticity and straightforwardness is rare to find from footballers today. With the corporate and commercial influence of football skyrocketing over the past two decades, the popularity of its stars has also risen, with players evolving into global celebrities. Due to their celebrity status, football players are constantly under scrutiny from both the media and fans, and even the slightest misstep could jeopardize their reputation. This is where PR comes in. It's just all you need is some players to play with. I know you can't say that, but I'm saying it. I just think you need more quality around you. For me, he needs to build the team around you. The quality where you have, but that come with a few transfer winners, hopefully, once he gets the right players in. Yeah, there's a lot of quality there. Like, not just me, we've got loads of other players, so hopefully the team can gel a bit more than everyone has, everyone has seen. All right, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Cole, cool. thank you so much for you. In the context of footballers, public relations is the strategic practice of managing various communication channels to shape a player's image, reputation, and public perception. Through this management, publicists and PR agencies construct an ideal image of the footballer to present to the media and the public. Although PR covers a lot when it comes to players, including building a personal brand, liaising with media outlets, and various other aspects, a key objective today is to ensure footballers maintain a non-controversial image off the pitch. This aims to reduce the likelihood of any potential scandal arising from the player saying or doing the wrong thing in an interview or on social media. Early in their careers, clubs enlist media training and PR companies to instruct academy players on how to respond to questions appropriately and how to handle challenging inquiries on the spot. And with the rise of social media, the need for image control has extended beyond interviews and onto social platforms. A lot of footballers today have their social media accounts managed by their PR or social media teams to prevent themselves from accidentally posting something that may elicit controversy. Although it's easy for us fans to perceive this as a footballer being disconnected or artificial, I can understand why they choose this approach. For them, choosing to play it safe with complete sanitization is less stressful than being fully transparent and risking a media scandal. With that said, even though footballers have access to top PR agencies and the most up-to-date PR schemes, they still can't completely fool their fans. The other day, I was on the Spurs subreddit and came across a comment that read, I love when players obviously run their own social media. This was in response to a screenshot of James Madison joking with the Spurs Instagram admin. I also remember people on Twitter praising Neil Morpé for provoking Madison and several other Spurs players on and off pitch during the most recent Brentford vs Tottenham match. Despite being inflammatory, Morpé actually shows raw personality and appears unconcerned about potential negative press or fans berating him on social media. It seems that English football fans are so deprived of unabashed personality that they praise a player for being overly provocative, simply because they get to witness a footballer not being meticulously handled by a PR team. The same sentiment applies to the fan on Reddit who was happy when they discovered Madison runs his own social media accounts. Supporters feel refreshed when they see a player being authentic and acting in a way that hasn't been overtly influenced by PR or media training. Okay, so we've established that avoiding controversy is a primary objective in football PR. However, should controversy arise, PR teams also develop crisis management strategies to address the situation effectively, aiming to minimize negative press, or at the very least, stay ahead of the situation. 
A recent example of crisis management can be found in Marcus Rashford's response to a recent clubbing scandal. In late January of this year, reports surfaced that the footballer had skipped training after allegedly being caught clubbing in Belfast. In response, Rashford released an open letter titled Who I Really Am via the Players' Tribune website. The letter was quite emotional, with Rashford expressing how his commitments to Manchester United is rooted in his childhood love for the club and the sacrifices he made as a young boy to play for United. He also touches on the media portrayal of him, both in general and during this scandal, expressing his belief that this portrayal is often distorted and doesn't reflect reality. Before I continue, I do urge that if you're a football fan or haven't read the letter, that you do so. Despite being a PR attempt to settle negative press, the details shared by the footballer do expose a larger truth about the perception of Marcus Rashford and the English press, specifically the struggles that he and other players of colour face at the hands of the media. But back to the topic at hand. The response to the piece was not great, to say the least. Most of the online responses were either sincerely advising the Manchester United player to focus on football or outright trolling him, labelling the footballer a PR merchant who cares more about optics than actually playing good football. The reason this letter fell on deaf ears for many fans, both Manchester United supporters and neutrals, is that, despite its apparent personal nature, it ultimately lacked a sense of accountability regarding the actual issue at hand. Instead, it was a more general letter addressing the mistreatment Rashford receives from the press, rather than directly answering the questions fans wanted clarification on, both regarding the situation and his overall underperformance. The optics suggested that he cared more about his public image than his actual career. While Rashford likely wrote the letter, it's improbable that his PR team would have allowed it to go out without reviewing it first. As we established earlier, fans can often see through a PR effort and can detect a footballer's false self. Even though the letter was intended to be a moment of clarity, a lot of fans thought Rashford wasn't being fully transparent with them due to the timing and underlying motive of the letter. Supporters disliked the feeling that a letter partially addressed to them lacked sincere sentiment, appearing more as an attempt to mitigate negative press than fully be accountable and open. Ironically, the letter seemed to increase the negative publicity Rashford was facing rather than alleviate it. A PR crisis is always going to be a catch-22. No matter how personal the footballer tries to be, some will still see it solely as an attempt to tone down the negative press. A fan reading Rashford's letter may be taken out of the personal aspect of it because they realise that the letter was overseen by an entire PR team, as opposed to Rashford himself sitting down and talking candidly. Fans yearn to see the true selves of players, but in today's world, that just isn't possible. PR is fascinating to me because it revolves so much around control and manipulation of public opinions. Somehow we've all accepted this, and it's become an industry norm to have PR units not only for football, but for all industries and public figures around the world. I've been studying communications for the past few years, and PR still remains incredibly interesting to me. PR strategies are ever-changing because society at large is becoming more aware of the practice, and it's becoming increasingly more difficult to fool fans and the public. Despite the general consensus among football fans that PR is a bad thing, I don't hold an anti-PR stance. Top footballers today can't survive without PR, because as much as some fans claim they want players to be entirely themselves, just as many are waiting for any slip-up to hate on them. A lot of the PR models that footballers follow today, some of which are outlined in this video, seem outdated to me. PR is most effective when it doesn't entirely sanitize the player, but instead tailors the public image around their distinct personality. I've seen this approach in players like Mbappe and Bellingham, who despite having publicists and PR teams, managed to allow glimpses of their true selves to come through in interviews and on social media. I hope both PR agencies and players realize that fans don't want them to give identical answers in interviews and share sterile statements on Instagram. Instead, fans want to see more personality, even if there's still a degree of control at play.